Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunity Special YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. Now this is Pro Wrestling Logic. This is the 1027 uh, 90 edition of the Pro Wrestling Logic edition of WCW Saturday Night Review. And uh, we've got, as mentioned, a whole bunch of these for sure. Uh, and um, 19, I believe this is actually the day of Halloween Havoc 1990, something like that. If it wasn't, it might have been the day before, but I believe back then, uh, Saturday night pay-per-views were the norm, or at least a somewhat common thing for WCW at the time. Um, anyway, uh, kind of coming into their own with that, and, uh, um, you know, uh, 102790, second hour of the program overlapped with the first hour of Halloween Havoc, featuring a rundown of Havoc card, also narrated by Gordon Soli, including a segment with the wrestling wrap up hosted by Soli, featuring and the NWA champion Sting, Sid Vicious confrontation to Clash of Champion, Vicious attacking Sting on September 30th card in Chicago, following comments from both men. Footage also shown of the NWA Tag Team Champions Doom attacking Arn Anderson and on Worldwide and Ric Flair and Arn Anderson jumping the champions, as well as footage of recent match in Greensboro in which the two fight to a double counter and brawl all the way backstage. Following also comments Teddy Long, Flair, and Anderson uh, featuring a promo of Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin regarding their upcoming match at Havoc against Chris and Mark Youngblood, including a Havoc commercial starring... Elvira and Victoria, also the clash comments and uh, for Hanson and Luku footage, uh, footage also airs of the Nasty Boys attacking uh, the Shiners during the September 30th contract signing in Chicago, and comments from both teams during which Scott said the title meant nothing compared to the revenge they were going to take on the Nasty Boys, um, and then. Um, then there's a promo of Junkyard Dog and, and El Gigante regarding their match later in the show, featuring a segment of Trucker Norman's Corner, in which Norman, sitting, sitting with the crowd, manages to go in the direction of me entering my phone, apparently. We'll be back with two shakes on the lamb's tail with more. And again, the Halloween Havoc 90. This is the second in the Halloween Havoc editions. I know Eric Bischoff is a major fan of the Halloween Havoc concept. I'm kind of there, although I'd much rather Halloween Havoc than any of the junk that uh, WWE puts out these days. Needless to say, um, again, we go back to the run of things in a very basic manner and uh, ultimately, you know, uh, history of uh, the... Halloween Havoc is important to the WCW archive. Uh, anyway, Tracy's mother and Steve Armstrong defeat uh, Bill Ford and um, Chuck Coates, 734, smothers, pins Coates after a side double off the top rope. Armstrong holds Coates in the air during that. Jim Cornette also joins commentary and argues that Smothers and Armstrong shouldn't be receiving an award from the NWA Wrestling wrap up instead of his team uh, in the form of Lane and Eaton in a good way there. Um, I mean, it's a one-sided match, certainly. The Wild Ice Southern Boys are a great tag team at the time, and um, if WCW was more committed to the tag team division, uh, the match should or could have been worth more value. Uh, however, we then go to a very, um, you know, basic match for Smothers and Armstrong. Um, but, again, at the time, 1990, a much different time, and you didn't need all the chaos and the needless high spots and lack of psychology that comes with uh, a run there. Um, needless to say, the, you know, the um, tag team division at the time is pretty stacked, to be fair. Uh, whether you go into things like, but not limited to, um, you know, uh, Steiners or the Freebirds or whomever. It's just an interesting co combo run there. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know, kind of getting things going in a positive direction. 
Um, again, the enhancement talents are able to hold their own, but uh, also the, the idea that they would have a show overlapping their pay-per-view pre-show or their pay-per-view starting is just goofy to me, at least uh, from a marketing standpoint, but it's WCW in 1990, everybody, and uh, they certainly don't have a lot of intelligence there. Uh, drop toe holds and arm bars, uh, ride time, hammer locks by uh, basically Tracy Smothers for the most part. Um, you know, a, con- a continuation there of trying to get things going in a decent enough position. Uh, elbow drop to the top of the neck, and uh, at the time, also 1990, you get away with putting the Confederate flag on your tights, apparently. Obviously couldn't do that these days. Uh, needless to say, the, the match is pretty decent, although Cornette's commentary, the highlight of the match, because it's, it's standout, uh, just in the sense of, you know, him complaining about the unfair treatment of the, um, the, uh, Midnight Express and, and everything that comes with that hype of the benefit of a continuation of things. Uh, Sid promising to eradicate and get rid of Sting once and for all. Obviously, they had been horsemen previously. Sting not impressed with Vicious. Vicious having laid him out as part of the um, Clash of the Champions a few weeks and months before. Uh, The wrestling wrap-up is where all this takes place. They do show footage at at house shows of Sting and Sid kind of going at it a little bit. and the elimination of Ric Flair and Arn Anderson from Doom's future does not occur at the at the uh, the Clash of the Champions, even though that's the promise that comes forward. Uh, Tommy Rich and Ricky Morton in a enhancement match here. Rich and Morton probably trying to capitalize on both of their NWA, uh, you know, I guess history for lack of a better term, uh, trying to get more out of that that they can that they can. Italian Stallion is one of the enhancement talents at the time. The other enhancement talent here happens to be, um, let's just take a look here, uh, Joe Kazana, 738, Morton pins Kazana with Sunset Flip after Rich punches Kazana in the midsection during the battle. So now that Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin were uh, responsible for a major knee injury to Robert Gibson, which would put Gibson out of action for six months to a year. Um, I believe the actual injury was something like a uh, major run, which I did not know at the time before watching this particular episode that Gibson had been put out of action for that long. So that explains the uh, nature of the uh, team of uh, Gibson and Morton that uh, uh, we'd have, uh, or Gibson and uh, Rich that we'd have for a while yet. Um Anyway, I mean, it's a very basic match. Ricky Morton doing the fired up comeback just doesn't work as well in an enhancement match. And certainly Tommy Rich, who they probably really didn't have much for outside of his run here uh, with with Ricky uh, Morton to kind of piggyback him is kind of there. J.W. Storm defeating Terrence Blaylock with one hand on the chest, 145, following a choke throw, kind of choke slam. Storm punches Blaylock in the face afterwards. Storm basically uh, gets, you know, a couple of body slams, a couple of clotheslines in there, and that kind of choke bomb sort of situation as it relates to getting that eradicated. Um, J.W. Storm, an interesting character that really they don't go too far with. He's there for a good bit of um, 1990, but he's not really doing a heck of a lot. Uh, Tom Zink then defeats Tom Burke with a crossbody off the top rope, 614. Uh, Zink at the time, certainly a guy who uh, manages to get, you know, a good bit of television time. And actually, going back and watching these WCWs from this time period, the most amazing thing to me, at least, is the idea of, uh, you know, kind of getting things going and... um, Getting things, era- getting things eradicated and, and all of that, um, you know, kind of there. And uh, uh, Zink is a guy who, with the Brian Pillman thing from earlier in 1990, the, I believe, U.S. Tag Team Championship, um, 
obviously can, trying to get more out of Tillman and Zink as single stars obviously filling as the TV time. I don't know that the, the two hour uh, television time slot was needed from WCW at this time, although they kept with it anyway. Again, the the taking of credit by the Freebirds to take out one Robert Gibson, a pretty big thing at the time as well. Um, and, you know, again, kind of the short-term matches here. Zink is always fired up. Zink is always trying to get uh, as much as he can out of uh, everything, kind of front face locks, basic things. Zink gets his ride time. Match could have easily been done in, in, in much shorter time, but uh, Tom Burke takes a couple of really good shots. Luger basically says he's not intimidated by anybody in the wrestling wrap-up segment, including Stan Hansen. He's going to take care of Hansen. He's going to take care of the uh, U.S. title. He's going to be uh, at the top, and of course that wrestling wrap-up thing is a pretty big deal as they are continuing to uh, get us ready for Halloween Havoc. There's a bit of a music video prior and uh, lots of commercials for the Halloween Havoc uh, program, which Halloween Havoc 90 um, is interesting for a number of reasons. Tim Horner uh, is in a tag team match here. Uh, Horner, um, you know, is uh, facing off with the State Patrol, which is Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker and uh, Sergeant James Earl Wright. State Patrol kind of going around uh, the... Mike Rotundo and Tim Horner are their opponents. Um, very basic tag team match. Double clothesline. Mike Rotundo has not done the VK Wall Street heel turn here yet, but um, ultimately Mike Rotundo managing to kind of find something to do with himself post the Varsity Club run in 1989. Um, match goes through a commercial break. Um, you know, very basic contest. Um, Good tag team wrestling. Mike Rotundo at the time had never really found a gimmick that entirely was him, to be fair. Um, and uh, then you, you see the State Patrol managing to get, um, you know, front, f front face lock and head scissors and all that, getting things forward. Tim Horner at the time, a Georgia standout from previous generations and uh, or from what probably – six or seven years before, but uh, they eventually get a get a roll-up due. Uh, Rotundo and Horner, and they manage to get a victory. Uh, tag team match upcoming for the Junkyard Dog and El Gigante. Did not realize that El Gigante wasn't immediately put in a, uh, I guess, a main event program or whatever have you. Then we go to um, a, you know, bit of a more... Enhancement style match taken down by one of the uh, newer WCW guys at the time, which happened to be Alan uh, Alan uh, Iron Eagle. So I say not two times fast with Chris and Mark Youngblood pinning Bob Andrews 328 following a double chop. Um, very basic match. Lots of um, interesting kind of. Uh, kind of run through there. What I mean by that is um, just mat wrestling for the sake of mat wrestling, trying to get things going there. And, uh, um, you know, a very basic punch kick approach. Uh, the Youngblood's endorsing uh, Iron Eagle is is there also. The Native American thing at the time is acceptable. Barry Horowitz actually getting a win on television, which I did not realize until watching this old series. That, in fact, that happened. Barry Horowitz uh, pinning Tommy Angel 248 with the three-quarter roll of the La Mahi Frost Cradle. Uh, Horowitz gets a chin crusher and a couple clotheslines and a, a couple body slams in on that. Then we go to El Gigante and the Junkyard Dog defeating uh, Kamikaze and El Diablo 246. Gigante scores a pin following a boot to the chest. I mean, he's lumbering around. Junkyard Dog doesn't need to be in there much. Uh, with a guy nearly, what, seven and a half feet tall. Um, needless to say, uh, you know, that that big boot is exactly what's needed. And then we go to the final match on the day, which is Trucker Norman with the 
junk with, with the juicer rather uh, defeating Keith Hart 153 blocking a sunset flip and hitting a sit down splash Trucker Norman hits a couple of clotheslines a couple of body slams um, gets the uh, sit down splash and the victory and that will close us for that hol- pre Halloween Havoc edition obviously kind of a weak way to close for the show but we'll be back with more right after this <laughs> 